Hello my lovelies, welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Mary and I give you an extra warm welcome. I would love it if you could click the subscribe button and stay for a while. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you more than you know. So as you could tell from the title of the video, I'm doing the Pat McGrath Bijou Brilliance Holiday 2023 first impressions slash review part two. And I say part two because I ordered two quints and the Cheek Trio. So for today, we're going to play around with the other quint and then apply the Cheek Trio again. I do have a quad that I want to compare this with. So I'll be doing that as well. Yeah, so it's going to be a tiny bit shorter than the first one because that was like my very first, first impressions with opening everything up and just reviewing all the three products I purchased. But for today, these two are the main focus and doing a couple of comparisons for this one. All right, let's get some primer on my eyelids and get started with an eye look. Okay, my lovelies, eye primer is on. I have the NARS eye primer base in shade light. I did change up my base a tiny bit from the other video. Today I have on the Hourglass Ambient Foundation. I think that's what it's called. This one, a soft glow foundation. Just in 7.5 used the makeup forever hd skin concealer so i didn't change that up i kept that the same um i did go in to some cream products under my primer because we have already tested out the cheek trio i used the kevin aquan contrast stick and the charlotte tilbury cream bronzer and then for the cheeks i went into the denissa myricks powder balm cheek blush thing i'll just link everything down below and i when i link my stuff i usually link the exact shades that i use in case you were curious okay so to start and i look with this beauty here i have a quad that kind of reminds me of this and i want to say the matte shade is close to this one i don't even know what i'm going to do today we're going to start with the burgundy shade which What's the name of that? Let's see. Neptunian Orchid or Platinum Moonlight. Okay, it's Midnight Iris for the like burgundy purple leaning shade. This is the Refer 01. And this is like a satin matte formula. So this is going to go in the outer corner and I'm doing pressing motions first. And then I'll blend. I was thinking maybe I should do a halo eye, but I don't know. Oh, and I did take out my um, at-home lash extensions. I wanted a break and I did want to use mascara because I have to use some mascara up. I have too many that are open that are just sitting there. All right, sorry. I did end up doing like a halo eye. So basically I brought this brush in here tapped it first and then just kind of swept it a tiny bit also brought a tiny bit of it down here basically marrying what i have here and i think i'm going to blow out the edges of this because i don't have another shade other than this matte the rest of them are kind of shimmers now you could add a shade from another palette like I did with the first quint but I'm gonna see how this looks and then if I need to add it then I will but I just wanted to show you what I did okay that's what we got now we're going to jump in to that pretty dark teal shade what is the name of that noir nebula okay so no I'm We'll see. We will see. Because noir, in case you didn't know, that's French for black. So if it's going to be another one of those black shades that just has blue sparkles in them, I'm not going to be happy. This is the Sigma and Samantha Shader Crease Brush. I want to be pretty precise. Okay, no, it is a dark teal blue. Good. I was about to throw a fit. As you can tell, this is like a very small detail brush and that's because i want to make sure that i have full control over this shade because i'm going to use it to deepen up the outer corner 
and also the inner corner since this is a halo eye. I did end up purchasing the mini refer brushes. It just makes sense because I enjoy detail work like this. The bigger ones, I just know for a fact that I wouldn't use them. Should I bring it on the, maybe a tiny bit down here. Okay, that actually worked very decently. I'm really liking how this is looking. So far, I'm enjoying this color story a lot more than the other one, which is crazy because it has teal blue in it, you know? Okay, now I'm going to jump in to this shade, which is Neptunian Orchid. I did put on my trusty NYX glitter glue and I'm dipping into it lightly because I don't want this shade to take over the eyelid. Like, maybe I should have gone differently. I don't know, let's see, let's, let's, let's just see how this looks. I am going to put another shimmer. So far, I would say this shade looks more like a real blue. Okay, I did reinforce both that like burgundy purple wine shade and a tiny bit of that dark blue or teal blue shimmer. Now we're going to jump in to the shade in the middle, which is called Pale Amethyst. We're going to put that right in the middle of this. This one looks like it's a topper, and that's why I kind of chose to do this one first, because I felt like it was just going to add an extra oomph to this light teal blue shade, which this light teal blue shade has golden, almost like a copper golden specks, and it's actually really pretty. Not my favorite, you already know how I feel about blue, but it does look pretty. And as you could see, I did go in with that light teal blue on my lower lash line. I'm going to do the same with the pale amethyst, and I did use this Sigma detail pencil brush for the lo lower lash line, but you know what? Let me wet it just to make sure that this pale amethyst doesn't get lost. And I'm just gonna like tapping motions. More of a subtle, like it's not supposed to take over the eye look. Okay, this is what we got so far. Just one shade left and also this one here, I don't know if in the other palette there's a shade like this, but it almost feels gel-like when you touch it. It's pretty nice, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Um, yeah, it feels, and it leaves it pretty good. Like it's bam in your face. Okay, now we're going to jump into the last shade, which is this one here, and it's called Platinum Moonlight. I am going to wet my brush. I did wipe down the detail pencil brush from the Sigma and Samantha Ravindal collaboration. So I wet it with the MAC Fix Plus, dipping into that shade, and it's going to be the inner corner shade. Okay, let me go ahead and finish off, and I'll be right back. Okay, just about done. We are going to jump in to the cheek palette. So I'll start with the bronzer, then the blush, and then the highlighter. This is the Sonia G Classic Cheek. Okay, now the blush. This is the Sonia G Soft Cheek. And now the highlighter, Sonia G Mini Cheek. You know, for some reason, these are very powdery. I don't recall, it was made in Italia, okay. Yeah, I don't recall her other formulas, like the singles that I have, to be quite as powdery, but I could be wrong. Okay, my lovelies, makeup is nice and completed. I think this eye look is absolutely stunning. Definitely more of an eye look that I would wear to a special occasion than like day to day. <laughs> that middle shade, the one that I told you kind of feels like a gel-like consistency. I need to swatch these, by the way. 
it's so gorgeous it just really packs a punch and that inner corner shade also it's very very reflective okay i would love to know what you think about this eye look 100 percent prefer this color story over the other one i don't know why i think it's that black i think the black just kind of threw me off so i'm gonna start from here going down really soft yeah this one the middle one like i said it feels almost like a gel like consistency pretty pretty i do feel like we've felt that from her before okay last two shades all of these are soft very soft this blue one the teal dark blue one almost feels a tiny bit crumbly i didn't get uh too much fallout i just got a tiny little specks yeah, I have the perfect quad that this reminds me of. But all the shades swatched beautifully. Okay. Would love to know your thoughts on this eye look. So pretty. Ooh, I forgot to tell you. I did go in for the lips to Natasha Denona Lip Liner in L3. That's part of her older formula, so I don't know if that's even available or if there's a new shade from the new I Need a Nude Lip Crayons that coincides or is like that shade but actually named i don't know but it has like a mauvey undertone and the lipstick from i forget which bridgerton release <laughs> in negli j okay my husband is mowing the lawn i did want to do a couple of comparisons uh there's not too many blues that i have in my collection from pat mcgrath i do have the very first mothership palette but my room's a mess that i didn't even take it out I wanted to compare the blue in this one to this blue. So I feel like undertones are similar, especially because this one kind of shifts, but the formula is different. This one looks like it might be a tiny bit more of like the glittery baked Jolet kind of formula. I did also want to compare this Bridgerton one just the blue one, I guess, because for a second here, I thought maybe we could, well, no, this one's just a tiny bit more purple, you know? But there's the blue in both palettes. This one's a tiny bit darker. I don't know if, I think I prefer this blue over the other blue and the other Bridgerton palette. Okay, and then last but not least, the quad that these swatches totally reminded me of this one here. This is the uh, Deep Space Divinity, which was part of the Celestial Odyssey release. Let me swatch this because it reminds me of this shade here. Okay, they are different. This one has a tiny bit more of like a red undertone. And this one has, it's like more cool toned. But close, if you ask me. And then I want to swatch this blue one, which this formula feels very close to this formula. Swatch it right here. This one's like a duochrome, so it's not, because it has like a burgundy base. You see that? Yeah, not even close but i'll see if i can find the eye look i created with this quad reminds me a lot of this eye look i'll see if i can find it and if i do i'll post it up here so if you have this quad i think you tiny bit get these vibes in this quad i understand if you're just like no it's not the same thing because it's not i do feel like this formula it's different from the quints that she has to offer. All right, my lovelies, I hope you enjoyed those comparisons. I decided not to take out the big, like 18 pan holiday palettes, just because most of them are pretty colorful. These are the ones that I feel kind of give you more of the vibe of this quint. What is it called? A Lunar Night Shade. It's a pretty one. 
Uh, I wouldn't say it's my absolute favorite, but I did have more fun playing with this one than the other Quinta that I picked up. Uh, I feel like when it comes to Pat McGrath, we have just seen the same thing over and over. And I do feel like she did bring us just a tiny bit of variety in this collection. I would not recommend everything. Like even though I didn't test it out, everything, I mean. <laughs> I just feel like seen it we've seen it all there was nothing too super special about this holiday collection i think the one thing that i would recommend if you do want to pick something up from this holiday collection is the quince the formula in these is so pretty i mean look at this eye look absolutely gorgeous i just feel like these are pretty special for the price and for the size great for travel small compact like i feel like this is, this is where it's at. If you have a huge collection and you have individual blushes, individual highlighters, individual bronzers, then like the eye and face palette, I think you can skip on that. The cheek trio, I think you can also skip on that. Yeah, it's just, it's how I feel. But I will not deny that anytime you pick up a Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette, your eye look will be phenomenal. All right. Well, I would love to know if you picked up anything from this collection or if you're waiting for a sale. Let's talk down below. I love interacting with you all down in the comments. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. You have no idea all the comments, all the likes. If you use my links to shop, it all truly does mean the world to me. So with that being said, I would love it if you gave the video a big thumbs up. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as you can hear, chaos is going down downstairs, so I'm trying to rush. <laughs> all right, my lovelies, I will see you all on the next video. Bye.